Hi guys. Well, we're going to do another video. This time on pedance matching. And basically what I'm going to look at is just more or less uh, at this point because it really works the same on no matter what. But we're going to look at mostly at just an output transformer. We're also going to kind of look at a 6L6 tube a little bit. And uh, kind of give you some ideas, you know, what a pedance matching is and how it's done. How to figure it. It's not that hard. But to give a little background on it. And yes, there's a little math to it that is not, well, I'll get into some other things here in a little bit about the math and about how much you really need. <clears throat> Impedance is, in a transformer, is related to its windings, to actually the turns ratio. So... If I take in as my my turns, number of turns, P primary so this is your turns ratio of primary to secondary. Square this, that will equal impedance of primary to impedance of secondary. So the number of turns in the primary squared to the number of turns in the secondary squared equals the impedance of the primary. To the impedance in the secondary. So the two ratios are equal with the, as long as I square this side. Now another way of looking at this is I can actually just square root both sides and do this. Now you can rearrange the the math any way you want so that you can solve for just one thing you can bring your secondary impedance over here and find your primary impedance that you want or vice versa you can do any number of things <clears throat> but as a general rule what you will know is these two things your impedance your secondary is going to be your speaker impedance and the impedance on the primary is going to be what the tube is looking for. Now in the case of the 6L6, depending on how it's used, uh, give you a little shot of it. If I can. On the 6L6, depending on, now this is just a single tube here. If we use as just a single ended amplifier, class A1, uh, what you have is depending on whether it's fixed bias or cathode bias, it can run anywhere from a load resistance, which will be that primary impedance of 2500 ohms to 4500 ohms. That all will depend on plate voltage which d then depends on the bias voltage that you're dealing with. If I have cathode bias, which means I've got a cathode resistor, it's self-biasing. Uh, the manual tells you what resistor to use, 170 ohm or 220 ohm. And it also tells you whether you have a 2500 or 4500 uh, load that you're looking for. If you're looking for if you decide to hook this tube up 
one thing you can do with uh, these tubes, this is a beam power tube or also a lot of people will call them a pentode. They're not truly a pentode, but uh, if you hook the screen to the plate, you can hook it up as a triode connection, which is here. The, then it's going to start looking for 5,000 to 6,000 ohms here. But again, this is just that primary impedance. That's your load. So no matter what kind of tube you've got, uh, if you've got an audio output tube, all of them will list something as far as load resistance. It'll be labeled as load resistance and it'll be in the in the tube chart in, in the tube manual. If you're looking at uh, oh like a class AB1 amplifier, push pull, and then you start looking at plate to plate. And this will be across the entire primary. Remember on a push pull the primary will be center tapped and that will go to the B plus. But the, the plate to plate say on a cathode bias is 9000 ohms that's clear across the primary. Again that's the primary impedance. So that's what's going to go in here. What's going to go in here is what you're using for a speaker. Now if you're doing a replacement transformer say you know you got a tube radio and it was made from as a general rule anyway from the later mid 30s all the way up through at least the early 50s you can basically use 4 ohms for that uh, they ranged anywhere from actual values of 3.1, there were a few 2.7s, but there were a few and far in betweens. But around 3.1 up to 3.9. Uh, the most commons were 3.2 to 3.8. 3.2 to 3.8. Any replacement that you would buy, if you buy a new replacement, the lowest it's going to go is 4 ohms. So you can use 4 ohms, and that's perfectly fine on here for the secondary or on the speaker. If you're building an amp, then your choices are even more. You can go 4 ohms, 8 ohms, 16 ohms, uh, speakers, whatever you want. And then if you got real, remember that if you use more than one speaker, um, you hook them up. You got to remember you got to deal with the fact that you're going to increase that, uh, increase or decrease that impedance. If you hook them in parallel, it's going to decrease. So if you hook two 16 ohms speakers in parallel it's actually 8 ohms. If you hook two 16 ohms in series it's 32 ohms. So all that's got to go in your figuring. But if you're building an amp you know you'll pick out what speaker you want for whatever wattage, whatever size and the whole nine yards and it will be if you're buying a new speaker it's going to be uh, you'll have choices and they'll be marked. But the speaker impedance goes here and what the tube's looking for, depending on how it's hooked up, whether it's single-ended or push-pull, if it's triode-connected or, or not, that load resistance is this primary impedance. Now, looks like something really interesting, but how can we use these numbers? How can we use what we got here? Well, we can do some rewriting and stuff. For one thing, if we decide, <coughs> let's give ourselves the different variables. We know that we've got this. We got that. But, that's kind of cumbersome to work with. And when you are looking up a transformer or trying to find one or something, you're going to have ratios like 40 to 1 or 30 to 1 or um, 25 to 1 or something like that, maybe even as high as 71 or, or something. But it's always going to be to 1, 1 being the secondary. 
the big number will be the primary. So if this is always going to be 1, what I can do is just rewrite this and I can just say give it a new thing. We'll put T R. R for ratio. Turns ratio. And I don't have to worry about this anymore. So if I just use TR then I can rewrite the original formula I can go square this equals Z primary or impedance of the primary to the impedance of the secondary. All right. Why don't we look at some numbers? Looking at a 6L6. And I hope that you can see this. Let's take a cathode bias 6L6. Um, Single-ended, class A1 amplifier. We're looking for 2,500 ohms. That's what that tube's going to look for, for a load. So, these two points, and if we figure that we're going to have a 4 ohm speaker, say we're doing a replacement, we've got a 6L6, or we're doing, maybe we're going to use it for some new amp, and we just pick a 4 ohm speaker. So we can plug those numbers in here. So in that case, we'll have my TR squared will equal 2500 over 4. Which equals 625. That's the square of it. If I take the square root, that gives me 25. And that's what it'll be, 25 to 1. Or you can look at it like this, 25 to 1. Either way. And that's the transformer you'd look for, is a 25 to 1 transformer. If it's you know, say 10,000 ohms and 4 would be 2,500, take square root of that, and that'd give you your number there. Uh, say you work out, you got, say, a 7,000 ohms um, that your tube's looking for. Uh, I believe like a 6V6 looks for 7,000 ohms uh, in single-ended, no matter what how it's hooked up, it's just across the board. If I believe it's 6V6. 7,000 ohms divided by 4, you know, that's going to work out with square root. It works out about a 42 to 1 turns ratio. So, you know, the point I'm trying to make out is when you're, first of all, you can find what kind of load you want from the tube manual. And it's going to give you a variety of a different circumstances depending on the tube but it will always give you a load that is this primary impedance that's what it's going to match to it's what it's giving the tube the secondary is basically all it is 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 the impedance of the speaker now we could go through some extremely complicated little theory here of exactly how this works it's called reflected impedance and basically what's going on is you've got a transformer okay say an audio transformer output transformer <coughs> and say like in our first example we have four ohms here and we're looking at 
a 25 to 1. So there's 25 here to 1 here. Oh, excuse me. What that means is for every turn that's on this side, there's 25 turns on this side. So for every turn of wire that goes around that core, there'll be 25 turns of wire on this side. That's what 25 to 1 means. It can be 41, it can be 3 to 1, it can be any number of different things. What happens is the secondary will reflect this 4 ohms back through the transformer from the secondary winding back to the primary, reflect it back in accordance to this turns ratio. It works out that it actually squares it, increases it by times itself or squaring it. But it reflects it back, increasing it because we've got a 25 to 1, you will increase by the square of that to times this 4 ohms to the impedance here, which worked out to be 2,500 ohms. Now the reason why that does that has to do with the mutual conductance or inductance, the coupling. It has to do with uh, when I when a signal goes through here and we build a we start building up a, a field, that field starts cutting across here. You have counter EMF, which creates an impedance, a resistance back and that's how that's reflected back. As this builds current starts drawn through this but then that in turn is actually building its own field that's counter that affects this coil and builds another counter EMF inside this coil and that's going to be in relationship to this 25 to 1 and it's going to have this load on it so that's going to reflect back in and cause this to appear as 2500 ohms as far as the tubes concerned or whatever is looking at it now DC wise if I looked at it with a DC meter it may be I don't know maybe 300 ohms DC resistance 2, 3, 400 ohms but impedance, because of this reflection, because of what's going on internally inside here with counter EMFs and everything that's going on, and a little bit of eddy currents because your core is never perfect, all this going on with this reflection using the 25 to 1 and the original formula of the turns ratio equaling the impedance ratio by a square, it sees 2500 ohms instead of the 300 or 400 whatever the DC resistance is now I said that a lot of cases you don't have to really deal with the math and you don't today all you need to know is what your tube is looking for and what your speaker is that's all you need to know you go on to any one of the the different sites that's on the internet uh, there's different places uh, that sells transformers uh, you go to any one of those and what they will do is they'll give you out a spec sheet and in that spec sheet it's going to tell you you know they'll spec each one of their transformers out of what you're looking for and that spec sheet is going to tell you you know what the primary uh, impedance is, what the secondary is looking for its impedance. Most of the time what you end up getting is a universal where you've got several taps on the secondary so that you can use like a 4 ohm, uh, 8 ohm, 16 ohm or also you can actually make some adjustments to that to actually change the primary a little bit too. Its impedance also but all that's wrote down. It's all in a spec sheet that comes with the transformer. It's on the website underneath for each one of the different transformers. 
you don't really need to know any more than what your tube's looking for and what speaker you have. And that's all you need. And then you just start looking up for the transformer. That'll match that as close as possible. And yeah, like old replacement ones or old radios and stuff, again, 4 ohms is about the lowest, uh, pretty much what you're all going to find in the low end um, for new transformers. The speaker may be actually more like a 3.2 to 3.8 or somewhere in that range. Um, that's fine. It just, it makes some minute changes and adjustment in this load. But that's all. The tube will work just fine. It's very forgiving and won't, won't bother it. It'll work fine. But that's all impedance matching is. And this works not just for audio. This works for any transformer there is. That basic formula I showed you originally, and like I say, you can adjust it any way. You can either go like this. You can use square root on this side if you want, or square this side either, either way. Or you can use the T. Turns ratio equals the square root of Z primary over Z or impedance. Yes. Works for any, any any transformer, whether it's an IF transformer, which really matters not because most of those are one to one, but it will work for them. It'll work for um, interstage audio transformers, output transformers, any any type of transformer. And it's also it's also the reason why if you take your power transformer and any radio you got and you go check it with a DC ohmmeter and you'll see four maybe six or eight ohms on the primary that plugs into your wall well that's a very low resistance actually if you actually use that and did the math and that's really what it would be the wall outlet would actually see as a load and you did the math you'd find that that transformer would draw a lot of current and dissipate a lot of wattage but that isn't what happens when that 60 cycle sees it and that's what's going on impedance deals with AC when 60 cycles sees it it's a, it's all the reflected impedances that go back into that primary from all the secondary windings and plus inductive reactants, capacity reactants of the windings, and various different things in the resistance in there. The impedance on that primary is what's actually being said, and it's quite high. It's in the tune of around several hundred ohms. So that's how come that transformer, set near by itself under no load at all, can just sit there all day long and won't even phase it at all. Um, it don't draw any current or very 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 little current. There's some loss in there. You got you got you know that few ohms of DC resistance is going to drop a little bit of you know uh, use up some current that's in there. But uh, it's because of this right here that that transformer never gets hot unless you short out the secondaries or something won't get hot so this works for all transformers as long as we're dealing with AC which is the only thing you can do with the transformer I hope this is understandable of what I gave I wanted to keep it as simple as possible um, and at the same time you know try to get across you know I didn't really want to get into real deep theory about it it's not necessary just realize that it does work um, and you can basically it's just 
your turns ratio primary to secondary equals the square root of your impedance ratio of primary to secondary primary to primary secondary to secondary this will be always some sort of number of primary to secondary of like 20 to 1 10 to 1 3 to 1 41 whatever so that's how come we can use something like this here just change our variable and just say turns ratio and let it run so I hope that answers any questions anybody has um, and I hope I explained it well enough if you do have any questions just leave them in the comments and uh, I'll if it's something I can quickly in a few sentences or a couple sentences answer I will if not I'll make another video a follow-up to this otherwise I want to thank you all for watching and uh, for your comments and I'm going to try to get some update video on the Admiral um, maybe tonight try to get that up so uh, if everything goes all right I'll end up with three videos uploaded to sometime tonight so anyway thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video